I, we're going to start out with two deep breaths and a prayer. Dear Father, I have no words except your name upon my lips and in my mind as I come quietly into your presence and ask to rest with you in peace a while. I thank you for my many, many blessings, God. Please help me to be who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, and go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say, and to whom. God, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know for an open mind and a new experience. Amen. We are on Lesson 46 this morning. God is the love in which I forgive. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. There must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is the great need of this world, but that is because it is a world of illusion. Those who forgive are thus releasing themselves from the illusion, while those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to them. As you condemn only yourself, so do you forgive only yourself. Yet, although God does not forgive, his love nevertheless is nevertheless the basis for forgiveness. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. Today's exercise, excuse me, today's exercises require at least three full five-minute practice periods and as many shorter ones as possible. Begin the longer periods by repeating today's idea to yourself as usual. God is the love in which I forgive. Close your eyes as you do so and I'm sorry, close your eyes as you say this, and then spend a minute or two in searching your mind for those whom you have not forgiven. It does not matter how much you have not forgiven them. You will have forgiven them entirely or not at all. If you are doing the exercises well, you should have no difficulty in finding a number of people you have not forgiven. It's funny, over the years, the same people come up over and over again and you know I'll get to a place where I think I'm free and in a moment I am you know because I have forgiven them in that moment forgiven myself um, and then I forget and I go back so it's it's interesting how you know over the years the same people are popping up for me so um so you'll you'll not have find you'll not find any difficulty in finding a number of people you have not forgiven. It is a safe rule that anyone you do not like is a suitable subject. Mention each one by name and say, God is the love in which I forgive you, and then insert their name. God is the love in which I forgive you. The purpose of the first phase of today's practice periods is to put you in a position to forgive yourself. After you have applied the idea to all those who have come to mind, tell yourself, God is the love in which I forgive myself. It's funny because even, I don't know, it's funny to, it's funny but it's not funny. I mean it is because I can't take it so seriously but to see the unforgiveness um, and the anger I hold toward myself. Um, it's deep and I don't even know what it's, I don't remember 
that it's from, you know, where it stems from. I know it's unconscious guilt, without a doubt. I know it's from the separation, but, um, you know, my turn, you know, my choosing to separate from God, but it's really interesting to see how deep it is, you know, how dark it is. Um, when I have, you know, when I get angry, it consumes me, you know, you know. It's, um, you know. Anyway, then devote the remainder of the practice period to adding related ideas such as God is the love in which I love myself because God is the love in which I am blessed. The form of the application may vary considerably, but the central idea should not be lost sight of. You might say, for example, I cannot be guilty because I am a son of God. I have already been forgiven. No fear is possible in a mind beloved of God. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. That's beautiful. The practice period should end, however, with the repetition of today's idea as originally stated. God is the love in which I forgive. The shorter practice periods may consist either of a repetition of the idea for today in the original form, in an original or related form as you prefer. Be sure, however, to make more specific applications if they are needed. They will be needed at any time during the day when you become aware of any kind of negative reaction to anyone, present or not. In that event, Tell him silently, God is the love in which I forgive you. God is the love in which I forgive myself. And it's funny because, you know, I have a new job, fourth one this year, because I just, I'm not going to settle my sanity. You know, even though the same lessons keep repeating themselves. Um, I feel like God's telling me, to step out on faith and do what my heart, my spirit has been urging me to do, but um, nevertheless, but anyway, so anyway, fourth job this year, you know, for different reasons, the first one didn't have insurance, and um, I think, you know, and it had a lot of lessons for forgiveness. And, and honestly, that's, that's what I'm seeing. Is in each job I see different lessons of forgiveness as reflections of me, if that makes any sense. It's not the people. It's not the situation. It's not the circumstances. It's what I see in myself. Um, so it's been really interesting. Not that I feel that way. You know, I can get blindsided and point the finger outward, um, and then sanity returns, and I can turn it in toward me, and, and I start to see the truth, is that it's really my stuff. So, anyway, it's, you know, it's interesting. My point was, is that I'm working with a woman today, she's beautiful, um, but it's so funny how I can see myself in her. You know, I really see myself in her. I absolutely do see myself in her more than anyone else I've worked with. Um, those are just, I, that I would see parts. This woman, I see so much of myself in her. Um, anyway, it's wonderful to have these, these lessons and this practice. Um, so anyway, it's uh, lesson 46, God is the love in which I forgive. I'm just going to read a piece here. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. There must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. So it's me condemning. You know, and it's because I've separated myself from God. 
Forgiveness is the great need of this world, but that is because this is a world of illusions. Those who are forgiving are thus releasing themselves from the illusions, while those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to them. As you condemn only, only yourself, so do you forgive only yourself. Yet, although God does not forgive, his love is nevertheless the basis for forgiveness, of forgiveness. Fear condemns, love forgives. You know, and I see that when I'm in fear. Oh my God, my ego is just screaming. Um, whether it be wherever, whatever situation, whatever relationship. So, Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. And I'm returned to my right mind, and I'm returned to love, and I'm returned to God. And that is it right there, you know. And, and it's all in the moment. Like I said, like one moment I'm forgiving this person, I feel peace, and I feel love. And, and then, you know, something might spike the unforgiveness against ego and fear. It's always some sort of fear that leads to this, my ego, reacting and blaming and condemning and judging. And then um, you know, I lose my, I go insane again because I don't see, you know, I'm, I'm looking outward in blame or condemnation or judgment. And, you know, which is based on my little Tiny little perception based on my past and my beliefs that has nothing to do with reality. So, I mean, how can I not forgive? And with God so lovingly forgiving, I don't know to judge, you know? Anyway, um, where was I? I don't know. I think you get the point. So, today's exercise is two, at least three, five, where did I get two from? Three, five, Full five minute exercises. You know, repeat the idea. God is the love in which I forgive. Just close your eyes. Spend a minute or two searching your mind. You know, there's no order of difficulty, there's no order of condemnation. You know, a small unforgiveness is equal to huge unforgiveness. It doesn't matter because it's unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is unforgiveness. And unforgiveness can't be love. Love can't be unforgiveness. So God is the love in which I forgive. God is the love in which I forgive myself. God is the love in which I love myself. God is the love in which I am blessed. I cannot be guilty because I am a son of God. I have already been forgiven. I've never been judged. No fear is possible in a mind beloved of God. Fear and love cannot exist, and God is not fear. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. God is the love in which I forgive. Alrighty. Two deep breaths and a prayer, and I love you. And I hope you have a beautiful day. That feels so good. I'm telling you, we, we were up last night. Our dog got sick in the bed. And it was so much fun. So we were up for probably two and a half hours cleaning up the dog from the bed. So, um, anyway, that being said, if I look tired, not my body, I am free, but. Yeah. I'm going to pray this prayer. Dear Father, let me see the face of Christ instead of my mistakes, instead of my errors. For I am your Holy Son, and I am sinless. I would not look upon 
my sinlessness, for guilt proclaims that I am not your son, and I would not forget you longer. I am lonely here and long for heaven, where I am at home with you. Today I will return. My name is yours, and I acknowledge that I am your son. Thank you, God, for my many, many blessings. Thank you. I love you. Have a most beautiful day. Thank you for being here. Mwah.